Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the BBCA webinar for rats and drains. Um, feels like a while since we've had one of these webinars, and today, um, first time where yeah, you'll be um, have the pleasure of Davey from Rat Detection talking about obviously um, you know detecting rats in sewers. But I think it's a really important subject for us to cover, and certainly. Davey's wealth of experience, I think over 30 years, Dave would do a, a bit of an introduction for himself in a moment, but I think you're all looking forward to it, and, um, and, and Dave will get onto that in a bit. Just before we do, um, just a little bit of housekeeping, um, for those of you that are new, and for those that um, have done these webinars before, just as a reminder. So uh, I can't see anybody, and nor can Davey, um, and we can't hear you either. If, what we'll do is we'll do some questions at the end. Um, we're not going to have a break in the middle like we normally do. So um, we'll do about 45 minutes and about quarter past one, we'll, we'll have a, people will get to the end of the presentation and Dave will be able to answer any questions that you might have. Um, there's a Q&A section. If you look down onto your screen, depending on whether you're on a phone or a laptop, you'll have a, an icon that says Q&A. So any questions, any technical questions you've got, Put it in there. Me and Davey can have a look at those when we get round to the questions section. Any um, technology issues that you have or any sound problems or anything that maybe I'm unaware of that you notice as a problem, then if you can put it in the chat section, they're really important. The chat section is for any issues that you've got with uh, the webinar or, what, or what's going on. But any questions you've got for Davey or myself, get in the Q&A bit. Uh, CPD points today, we've got one point for basis prompt as well as the BBCA registered. Um, all of you that are on BBCA registered, obviously your, your, your points will be automatically uploaded, as should be the basis prompt. Um, if you've got any colleagues that want to watch this webinar um, later on tomorrow or next week, then um, we will be uploading it as soon as we can, and you'll better view it under the old webinars. And again, you're going to get points for that, you just need to go on and register it yourself independently. Um, and yeah, so um, what we do is, Davey, I'll ask him to turn on your camera and your sound. That would be amazing. Um, and so you can give, give yourself an introduction. Yeah, we get on with the presentation. That would be amazing. Um, Good afternoon. Fabulous. Let me make sure I can see you there. Yeah, I can see you and everything. So go, I'll turn my camera off and my sound and I'll, I'll leave you to it, Davey. Thank you. Speak to you later, Natalie. My name is Davey Brown, drainage engineer of, I think, 36 years now. It's flown by. Um, I've worked for the national operators, the big companies. I've worked for myself. Um, all aspects of drainage, drain unblocking, drain inspection, drain clearance. I'll just cut the screen up. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So, as I say, my name is Davey Brown, uh, drainage engineer. and. Uh, back on track about 15 16 years ago uh, i built a website called draindomain.com this is a free drainage advice website it covers everything from septic tank installation land drainage installation drain inspection drain repair and through drain domain we were getting a lot of contacts from clients and pest controllers saying that rats in buildings rats in properties the problems were not getting solved So the typical scenario we found was a pest controller would attend site, do his two, three visits. He can't find any obvious above ground entry points. So he, he figures out it must be a drainage issue. So the client would ring the water company or a drainage cap contractor. They would attend site and say, it's not a drainage issue. So the client is now losing confidence with the pest controller because the pest he has said he's drains, the drainage experts have said it's not. Pest controllers were losing faith in drainage contractors and rightly so that we're getting a poor service. The client is now financially worse off, the two or three hundred pound down, and he's still got rats in the property. And we just got to the point where pest controllers were not recommending anybody. And this was leaving the clients open to the lottery of the yellow pages, as it was then, or Google. So we formed rat detection, specialist uh, drain surveying company who only operate in the pest control industry. We were established in 2007. 
we've worked with 240 plus pest control companies in that time. We do work for environmental health departments direct. We work with local authority housing departments. And we specialise in domestics, but we do a lot of full site surveys, schools, hospitals, prison sites. And in 2019, we did in excess of 1,000 rodent-related drain inspection surveys. Uh, my history and in training, I wrote and delivered the Drain Lining Foundation course for the National Association of Drainage Contractors. Drain lining is a repair method where we coat the inside of the pipes with fiberglass. I'm a member of the NADC training committee. I've supplied in-house training to numerous companies I've worked for over the years, and I wrote and now deliver a drain and sewer pest awareness course for kill germ chemicals. So these are some of the figures we see knocking about on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and in the press. Um, 80 to 90% of domestic rat infestations are due to defective drains. There's a lot of pest controllers out there just not aware of this. There's a lot of drains contractors not aware of this, sadly. 50 to 60% of people inherit their infestation. These are people selling houses with a known rat infestation because they're desperate. This is due to a poor service from professionals, both pest control and drainage contractors. Either pest controllers are not realising it's a drainage issue, or they are, and the drainage guys just aren't finding the problem. So people sell in desperation. So we spent a lot of time encouraging pest controllers to think about drains. But obviously there's a safety element to this. There's certain uh, dangers, risks involved when you're messing with drains and sewers, disease, explosion, asphyxiation, flood, confined space working. And once you open the manual cover, you are subject to working at high regulations. Confined space working is, is very dangerous. You should not be entering these chambers, manholes, pits, tanks, without being fully qualified and having the correct equipment. And as a basic rule, if you're lifting manholes, inspection chambers, you've got to make the working area safe. This includes using signs, cones, or Mrs. Smith will walk out with a tray full of tea and chocolate hobnobs and she'll be down the manhole before you realise. You've got to make the working area safe. So, one of the big grey areas is who owns what. And this is important because this reflects on who you call out if you need a drain survey. So, I'll show you a few scenarios. This is the type of drawing you will find on most of the water companies' websites. This explains who is responsible for what part of the system. This is called the drainage transfer. This came across in 2011. And basically, all shared drainage belongs to the water companies, regardless of whether it's in the road, the footpath, under your garden or under your property. All shared drains belong to the water companies. Private drains beyond the boundary of the property also belong to the water companies. So who do you call? Here we have a, a sketch of a detached property. Everything shown in red on that site plan is private drainage up until the front boundary line. Once the private drain crosses the front boundary line, the part where it then belongs to the water company. So on a job like this, you would need a private contractor to survey the drains immediately around the, the building. Here we have a row of terrace properties. Everything in red is private. Everything in green belongs to the water company. So if you look at number two on the left, that's private drainage up to the point that the pipe crosses the boundary of number four. Once the pipe crosses the boundary, 
the, uh, the system belongs to the Water Authority. So if you were to call out Thames Water, Seven Trent, Southern Water, they were a 10 site and they could only survey these sections. They cannot survey the private drainage. If we look at a similar scenario for semi detached properties, again, everything in green belongs to the water company. Everything in red is private to those properties. So if you call the water company, that's all they can survey. Now, this is where the misinformation starts because the water company will survey that section and they will come out with a sweeping statement that drains the sound. What they actually mean is their drain is sound. You won't get anything in writing, you won't get a video recording, you just get a verbal, everything's okay. And this is what the client hears. That's a part survey, the private drains to the house where you are more likely to get that infestation have not been looked at. These are the sections that are private. These are the sections that need to be. This is where the defects will be that are allowing rats to leave the system and enter the property. Uh, sewer plans, we get asked a lot about getting hold of sewer plans for a property. You can buy sewer plans from the water companies, cost 65, 70 pound. There's usually a disclaimer on the drawing saying, this is what we think we've got, and this is maybe where it is. Um, they will have no bearing on the drainage around the property. These are main trunk sewers only. The inspection covers shown in the road on these drawings, again, have no bearing on the drainage to the house. You can get individual drawings for properties, and these are usually how the architect would envisage the drainage system was installed. It can be misleading. It's not always the way that the property was actually built. So we encourage pest controllers to think drainage. We encourage pest controllers, if they can, safely to lift inspection covers on a site. And you'd be amazed what you find beneath. And this also opens up a lot of proofing opportunities. So you can monetize this if you're, if you're in the business, if you're a pest controller you can turn this into, into profit. So we have a few examples here. Here we have just a very poor mix of sand and cement and the rats have just gnawed straight out of the side of the chamber. Here, if you look at the center, we've got stone, silt and debris protruding from a brand slide. This would suggest rats are tunneling out of that pipe somewhere. It could be redundant, it could be collapsed, it needs further investigation. But one of the biggest battles we have is finding these manhole covers in the first instance. Very often, manhole covers are buried under block paving, decking, slabs. Gardeners, landscapers, tarmacers, driveway layers hate manholes, so they just cover them up. And you don't need them until you really need them. Then we get just plain stupid dwarf walls, fence lines over the top of covers, so they can be a bit of a challenge to get up. And then we just get the absolutely ridiculous. That's either the biggest man or key in London, or someone puts his back there every night. So why do drainage systems fail? We install these pipes in, in the ground, we cover them in pea gravel, we backfill, what could possibly go wrong? A few examples, the image on the left is a blue water pipe that's been mould. So pipe moulding, uh, the, the water board would dig a hole in the footpath, dig a hole at the side of the property and they would use a pneumatic mould between the two excavations below ground. And this hammers its way through the subsoil, dragging a new pipe behind it. And these moles will pass through drainage quite easily. The central image is a clay pipe, vitrified clay. This is subject to ground heave. When clay is wet, it expands. When clay is dry, it shrinks. So you get ground heave. 
but you can get the same effects from vehicle movement, vibration, tree roots, damaged clay pipes, and they start to collapse. The image on the right is a gas main, again, been mould through uh, a clay pipe. On the left, we have the classic fence post through the crown of a pipe, very common. Centre image is where a builder has made a new connection into a manhole, and being a builder, he's knocked a hole through the wall twice as big as he needs, and he's not sealed it up. The image on the right is a manhole that's collapsing due to ground heave, that could be due to ground water, could be due to vibration. So a lot can happen. But you won't find these defects. You won't find most of these defects about to drain, can we? So we know drains fail. We can explain to people that drains fail. And the next question is, OK, well, rats are getting out of the draining system. How are they getting to be roof space? And it's obvious they're parachuting in. So here's a perfect example of how rats leave a drain and get into somebody's loft. This is a vitrified clay pipe. And again, the builder has not to hold through the foundations of the property, maybe 300 mil a foot square, and he's put a four inch pipe through. The pipe settled, broken, so rats are leaving the draining system within 300 mil of the foundations. They will follow the pipe into the foundations, from that point, they've got access to the cavity walls. Now, building regulations require that a gap is left around any pipe that passes through the foundations. This is to allow for differential movement to either the pipe or the brickwork, and it doesn't crush the, the pipe passing through the foundation. Building control does say you can seal that gap using a flexible mesh but a lot of guys start to fill these holes up with concrete glass concrete with broken glass in sand and cement and you can't do that it has to remain flexible so the actual design is correct you can technically seal around the pipe work you seal the brickwork around the pipe if you put what we call a rocker joint on either side this is very easy to do at new build stage, very tricky to do after the event, so you just don't see it. So once rats are into the cavity, and here we have an example, you've got a one, two, two and a half inch cavity, you pretty much have run of the house. So here's a few images. I wouldn't try this at home. This is uh, a job our clients have taken on by himself before he got us involved. He's taken out a face brick and some breeze block to try and get some internal pipe work, but it just gives you an idea of the, the holes and the gaps between in the brickwork that allows rats to move around the property. If you look on the right-hand side, that's the party wall with the neighbours, and there must be a good two, two-inch gap. Rats will follow that up to the loft and the cavity is open on D-Reeves, so very, very easy travelling. We get a lot of clients who say we've had insulation put in, we've had it blown into the walls. That won't stop rats, you've just built a much bigger nest. So we'll just look a little bit more at construction techniques that allow rats to move around so freely. This is a blocking beam floor on an extension. Under that blocking beam floor will be a gap, 12, 18 inch. That's can move around quite freely. And you can see the wall cavity running around before they put the, uh, the face brick in. Here we have a solid concrete floor. And again, you can see the, the cavity running around the extension. Under that concrete, in modern day buildings, you will have a um, couple of inches of sand, and then you will have a thermal block. This is polystyrene sheeting. If rats get out of a drain under the property and meet this stuff, they just swim through it. That is, that is just a massive rat's nest waiting to happen. So 
So we have the hardware, we have all the equipment to find these defects, but they get missed. Why? Why we've got cameras, we've got push rod cameras, we've got cameras that'll crawl down sewers and pipes, and yet these defects are still being missed. So why do drain surveys fail? Knowledge, uh, knowledge of draining systems, knowledge of drain construction uh, is often missing. It's quite easy to buy a drain camera and set yourself up as an expert, but you need a little bit of knowledge. So there's more than one type of drainage system. So here we're looking at a detached property with a combined drainage system. So a combined drainage system takes sinks, toilets, showers, any contaminated water. It also takes the rainwater. And you find this on all the properties. So if a contractor was to turn up to this site, he's got plenty of access, three manuals, to get in with his camera and survey all accessible drainage. If we look at the same property, on a more modern build, you have two drainage systems. You have your foul system, and you have a separate rainwater system. Now, the reason we try and keep rainwater separate from foul drains is so that we don't overload pumping stations and sewage water treatment plants. And the rainwater may run to a river or a brook or a culvert. So the typical, typical scenario here will be that a drainage contractor at 10 site surveys all the drains on the foul system because there's three manholes, he's got plenty of access. He doesn't find a problem. He doesn't see a rat and says the system's sound. It's not a drainage problem. But in reality, he's probably surveyed 60% of the system. He's not looked at the rainwater system. So a decent surveyor would survey the foul system and realise he's not picked up any connections with the rainwater. And you would carry out flush tests and dye tests, and you'll be able to figure out there's a separate system that hasn't been surveyed. And if there's no manholes, you have to make access, you have to excavate, you have to get into that system, check it out before you can say with confidence that the rat infestation is not due to a defective drain. A simple trick is to look in the road. If you see two sets of covers side by side, this usually, not always, but usually indicates there are two separate drainage systems, one for the rainwater, one for the foul. So here's an example of how stuff like that gets missed. This was a site we were involved with a couple of years ago. Pest control had been out. Can't find the source of the infestation. Pest control gets a drainage guy in and they survey all the drains you can see there. And quite rightly say, there's no problems. They've then excavated the kitchen floor where the rats have been heard and not surprisingly, not found anything. The next stage of their investigation was to take the roof off the extension. At this point, the client's panicking, rings around, gets the second opinion, and we got invited to site. So I've surveyed the exact same runs, and the first contractor was absolutely spot on. There's nothing wrong with those drains that will allow rats to get into the property. But I've also had a little walk up and down the road and noticed there's two separate systems. One for rainwater, one for foul. I've then had a little walk up and down the road again and found properties that are original on that road that have not been extended. Always a good trick, a good tip if you can do it without getting arrested. And we can see that the property originally looked like this, where the green line is prior to being extended. We could also see on each property that hadn't been extended, there was a rainwater gully. Further investigation, we found a separate rainwater system. When the extension was built, the builder has trashed through the rainwater pipe, shoved the cement bag in the end or half a brick, and that's how rats were getting into the building. Why do drain surveys fail? This is a big one. Most surveyors can only work in straight lines.
Here's a property, semi-detached. It's been extended across the rear. And we're going to look at a short video showing this run. It's only about five metres long. So this line had been surveyed by two previous drainage contractors before we got involved. And both of them had missed that junction on the left-hand side. The reason for this is a lot of surveyors push the camera into the drain before they start surveying. The cameras are about 300 mil long, so you can soon miss something in the first 200 mil of pipe work. So that'd be missed by two contractors. One was a private contractor, one was a uh, watch company. So we carry on through, and you'll see on the left hand side, we have a second junction. There we go. Now that had been picked up by the previous two contractors. And then we come up to uh, the manhole ahead of the room. <clears throat> So one junction had been picked up and one had been missed, but neither had been mentioned as of any concern. So just to reiterate, we've got two junctions between two manholes. Now this is where most companies disappear. Didn't see a rat, didn't see any scratch marks. You don't have a rat problem. But they've not surveyed branch lines. It's not rocket science. You've got to check every bit of the system. So let's have a look at junction one. So we divert the camera left into the blind junction. Straight away, you can see there's debris in there. We have an open joint. That's a no great concern, but you can see padded dry silt in the base of the pipe. If that was live, that would have been washed away. The white flex you can see, that's uh, insulation, that's polystyrene. That's the result of rats knowing. That is 100% a road and exit point. <clears throat> At the end of the bone, we've got some broken pipe work adjacent to the original foundations. Missed by two companies. So we'll have a look at the junction two. This is the one that was missed by two contractors. Now, actually, this line has been capped off correctly. Correctly, in as much as rats cannot get out of the end of that pipe. However, building control states, if you were capping off a redundant branch line, you cap it off as close to the outfall as you possibly can. Otherwise, you are leaving a length of pipe that encourages rats to nest and stay in the system. So capping a pipe off there is incorrect. It should be capped off there. The building control oversee this? Sadly not. So this is the back of the property before it was extended. We have gully one in the rear left corner. We have gully two. We have the soil vent pipe discharging into manhole two. The soil vent pipe is the pipe that drops vertically from the first floor toilet and allows foul air to vent above the eaves of the property. So when the extension was built, the soil vent pipe was moved to the back wall of the extension. Gully one, which was a kitchen gully, has been moved outside the extension. Junctions one and two were left beneath the footprint of the extension and not capped off. Well, one of them was not capped off. And this is the cause of the infestation. This is as simple as it gets. Give me four of these surveys a day and I'd be happy. And yet this was missed by two contractors. So basically, most people are getting part surveys. Companies are looking at part of the system and judging off that 
but the drains are sound. Typical scenario, right hand semi, most contractors will turn up and survey the easy stuff. Manual to manual, manual to branch line. And then manual to sewer. That is a part survey. A decent surveyor should be surveying the blind branch lines. Junction one, junction two, junction three, and you know where this is going, junction four. That is a full survey. When you survey the whole system, you can make a decision whether rats are leaving that drainage system, or in this case, are they leaving the left-hand semi and coming through to number four. But show you now a few advantages of getting into blind junctions, the kind of results we get. Here we have a junction entering at 12 o'clock. It can be tricky to, to get into. And now we are looking at the underside of the kitchen cabinet. So what's happened here is it's a new build. The plumber was supposed to connect the kitchen waste, sink waste into that branch line. But instead, he went into the solvent pipe. So both the plumbing and the kitchen fitters have managed to work over a four-inch open drain in the kitchen floor and not think to cap it off. And that happens a lot. This is a property in Manchester, been surveyed two or three times, once by United Utilities, insurance company had sent out their private contractors, their, sorry, their preferred contractors, and they've all worked in a straight line. We flick into a junction, and we found a defect about a foot, 300 mil from the foundation. A blue water feed pipe. Again, this is a pipe molding exercise coming straight through the clay. And as you can see, there's holes on either side. Easy traveling for the rats within 12 inches of the foundations. Line left hand junction on a plastic system. Now, this is actually a redundant line. I think the ground workers probably put it in, realized they didn't need to use it, and they actually capped it off. However, the plastic cap must have been damaged or fractured, and that's been enough for rats to, to get some purchase. And there we can see the guy's foundations. Some guys are so eager to survey the drains, you don't survey the manholes. Here we have an extension right over the top of a manhole. They've put some steel work in to bridge the load. And now we are looking under the block and beam floor, straight under the extension. Most of the polystyrene thermal block has been gnawed away. And you don't really need a drain camera to find these, but you will lose a few iPhones over a year. Little ratty heaven. Of a similar scenario, you can see soil and debris on the benching, the sun cement benching. That can only be coming from above. Straight under the extension. This system had been surveyed three times by Thames Water. And this has been missed. Again, most of the polystyrene has been gnawed away. Very easy to find.
So a lot of contractors will turn up with one drainage camera, the one they own. There isn't one drainage camera that will do everything you want it to do when you're doing a full survey. There's different size cables, different size camera heads, different size springs at the back of the camera head. We typically, typically carry two or three cameras per van. So a little example of this, this is the same run surveyed with two different cameras. So if someone's put a drain liner in to fix a, a fracture. We're now going up to an internal soil vent pipe in someone's kitchen. So we've got a 90 degree bend now that bends up. And that light you can see is not a train, that's the daylight above the house, top of the soil vent pipe. Not too much there, everything looks okay. So if we now have a look with a different camera, Well, here's the 90 degree bend. Now this camera is a pan and rotate, it means we can move the head about. There we go. The first camera, a forward facing camera, has missed a big hole in the pipe. Forward facing cameras have limitations and blind spots when going around sharp bends, or any bend for that matter. So this could be easily be missed. So now we are looking through that hole, we can see the underside of the guy's kitchen floor. You can see uh, floorboards, some foundation. There's the floorboards. So easily missed if you've just got the one camera. This is a pan and rotate camera. A lot of contractors don't use them because they're not cheap. Very expensive. As I say on the training course, that camera cost me more than my first flat. But the main cause of rats the uh, main cause of drainage defects that allow rats into properties is builders, ground workers, people building extensions, people messing around drainage systems. We see a lot of bodge work, um, very typical left hand image. A builder is not to hold through the side of a manhole to accommodate a new plastic pipe and is not filled in around the pipe. So wraps will just jump up and they straight out and they will follow that pipe into the property. The centre and right hand images, that's a builder on a Friday afternoon. You need a junction to make a connection. You can't be bothered to go Travis Perkins so he makes his own. He just knocks a hole in a pipe and offers another pipe up to it. And if you're lucky, he'll surround that with a plastic bag and some concrete, but rats will soon, uh, soon leave the system. But the big one is extensions. If we look at the left-hand image, we have a detached property with a very basic drainage system. On the back wall, we have a kitchen gully and we have a soil vent pipe. And then if you look at the right-hand image, the extension is built. We'll just take a closer look. So the kitchen gully has been moved outside the extension. The soil vent pipe is now in the extension. But what about the original junction to the kitchen gully. What's the builder done with that? Here we have a detached property on the left. Again, fairly basic system. On the right-hand gable, we have a gully on the rear right-hand corner, probably rainwater. We have a soil vent pipe halfway down the gable, and we have a ground floor toilet. If we look at the right-hand image, they've had a full side extension. The only thing to stay in situ is the ground floor toilet. So what happened to these two junctions? Typically, the builder will smash out the gully pots or the rest bend at the bottom of the vent pipe and shove a cement bag in 
are half a brick. So unfortunately, we've lost the art of drain capping. The image on the left is how a drain should be capped off. That's a steel drain test bung, and in compliance with building regulations, you then fill the rest of the pipe and surround it with concrete. What tends to happen is what we see on the right. The builder will reach for the nervous finger hand, piece of brick, piece of slate, piece of masonry. Even if he's got the correct equipment in the van, they will do the easy thing. What most builders are thinking about, and ground workers, is when they backfill the hole, soil and debris will fall into the pipe. They are not considering what's coming the other way. So this is what we find on a daily basis. Left hand image, end of a pipe capped with a plastic bag, that's uh, everything building sand. Um, Centre and right, bits of brick, bits of masonry. No wonder rats leave the system. Again, same again, left hand side, masonry, another builder's bag on the centre image. And I'm not too sure what that is in the, on the right, but it just does not belong there. I'll just skip through that a second. So here's another scenario. This was a job in Southport we did a few years ago. We've surveyed the property and we've come up under the guy's extension and we can see the, the subfloor, we can see his plumbing, we can see his electrics. We went back to do the repair and the guy had found some images of the uh, extension being built. So what we can see here is the builders, and rightly so, decided to divert the drainage that does that, they decided to divert it around the extension, probably under the guidance of uh, building control. So they picked up the drain there, you've taken it through a new manhole, and then it connects back into the outfall pipe. But they've left the end of the original pipe there. I suspect that that cap is supposed to be in that pipe. But it won't fit because it's the wrong thing. That's a cap end off a plastic mantle. So it won't fit in the pipe. So somebody's tried, given up. So brick layers, block and beam layers have all worked over the top of that four inch pipe, open, and nobody's thought to cap it off. And seven years later, the guy's got rats in his house. Time's running out, so I'll just do one more scenario. Uh, this looks like uh, ex-Arsenal and England goalkeeper David James doing his own DIY work. This is a property in London, major infestation. The guy's messing on a Thames water manual. He's not supposed to be doing this. He's, he's making a bodge connection. He's roughly got it in line with the outlet. That is, that is not the way you make a new connection. There's a separate storm water system there to the side. He's then capped the top of the manhole off and built an extension. And of course, we've had a house full of rats. On this particular scenario, floor had to come up, the kitchen island had to come out because you had to take the on the floor heating up. This cost a lot of money to put right. The reason is. There's three connections in that manual, all left uncapped. So rats are clever, very clever creatures, but it usually takes a stupid builder to leave the door open for them, particularly on domestics. Right, I shall finish off, Natalie, with this information. Uh, we obviously have a website, but we also have a Facebook page um, rat detectives, it's just for pest control. There's people in the industry and we put numerous scenarios up, videos, and it's a good uh, good place to ask questions if you've got concerns about a site. Uh, it's populated by pest controls and a few drainage engineers, so uh, maybe worth checking out. Natalie. Brilliant, perfect. Thank you, David. That was a, 
was amazing and certainly speaking for myself you know when I was out there doing the job you know being able to visualize what could be going on under there is just so important and I think all those scenarios that really gave you know everybody food for thought and um, obviously we can't see through floors so we're always going to need that survey but at least you know when we're talking to customers we can kind of you know discuss what could be the issue. We use, uh, we use the analogy in the drainage world you wouldn't survey a house through a letterbox yeah. So sometimes just lifting a manhole is good. It's a good start, but it's right. not enough. You've got to get cameras in at some point and, and see Absolutely. what's going on. Well, we've got 17 questions. If I can just ask you to stop sharing your screen and then people can uh, see us nice and clearly, of which I'm sure they, they, they want. Um, so we've got 18 questions on there. What we do, we've got sort of about 10, 12 minutes or so um, to get through these. Any questions that we don't manage to get to, um, if you don't mind, Davey, I'll pop them over to you on a little spreadsheet and if you could do a bit of typing, answering them, and then we can send them out to all the delegates. Are you okay with that? Absolutely, yeah. I'm good with that. Fabulous. Just so we can get some more. Um, okay, fab. so I'll, I'll read them out for you. Um, so does your company work across the UK? Say again, sorry? Does your company work across the UK? Up until about six weeks ago, yes. We've had to, <laughs> due to demand and... Uh, the backlog of COVID, we've had to cut out certain counties. So Kent, Essex, uh, Cornwall, Somerset, but most of the Midlands, well, all of the Midlands, northwest, up into Scotland. Um, yeah, we, 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 but we do travel for specialist projects, prisons, hospital work, that kind of stuff. So okay. we'll, you know, all, we'll always listen. And you know, if we can't attend, we'll try and put you in touch with the right people. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, absolutely. Would you recommend for those people that maybe need uh, some experience help like yourself? But as you said, you can put them in touch with someone you feel. Like well, yeah. What we do for a lot of pest control is we've we've got a set list of questions you should be asking. You know, do you specialise in rat work? Can your cameras negotiate bends? Can't you get into blind junctions? Four or five basic questions, and you will eliminate the dross and the the the, the ones playing at it. So, we maybe put something together you can put out, Natalie, on the. Uh, with, with the information that'd be fantastic brilliant and um, so a question here from scarlett who is responsible for sealing around a branch drain connection onto a public sewer the owner of the private branch drain or the sewer, sewage undertaker yeah it's gray area because the manhole belongs to the water company the branch line belongs to the, the resident but if it's to do with the structure of the manhole then it should if it's, if it's a shared manhole and it's the structure of the manhole then it should belong to the water company but the water companies will often argue, well, it was your builder who made the new connection and didn't seal it up. So, yeah, getting cooperation from the water companies can be tricky. Yeah, do you have to get some licenses or permission to work on anything that's not private, don't yeah. you? Yeah, so yeah. we've I've probably got about 20 applications at the moment. We can work on sewer networks. We have to apply for a permit and you have to show you're uh, competent and you've got confined space training and, you know, you're trained to do the work and then you have to log in while you're working on the system. But yeah, it's certainly possible. It's not easy with the water companies, but it's, yeah. Indeed. But obviously um, you, you can't work on a rateable service um, without a permit. It, it's fraudulent. You know, mm -hmm. it belongs to the water companies. So yeah, th there are ways and means. Excellent. Um, okay, another one here. So how can rats get in from a rainwater gully that isn't under the house? Uh, there could be a defect on the outlet of the rainwater gully. Within, I mean, I've known rats tunnel from a defect five or six metres to get into a property in, in the right ground type. If it's chalk in, in Bedfordshire around there, if it's sandy, they'll follow the pipes in. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it may not be the actual gully that's defective. It could be pipe work within a metre, mm. uh, two metres. So, again, you've got to get a camera in and see what's, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, because isn't it right with um, some of the buildings you can... I mean, maybe not the newer ones, but the older ones. There's like a honeycomb effect of the way they lay the bricks so that there's gaps possibly in the foundation. Yeah, I mean, even on all the buildings. Yeah, so between properties, you get a lot of that on the dividing walls uh, between terrace houses. But, you know, rats will move between properties and the subfloors quite easily. There'll always be a brick missing. There'll always be some mortar missing, mm -hmm. particularly between lofts. You will never see, you know, even though in London, a lot of the properties have a fire break, there's always a gap. And we mm -hmm. all know what a rat can get through. And yeah. if the gap isn't big enough, they will chew it until it is. They will gnaw through it. So, mm. uh, yeah, it's uh, so the secret is you keep the rats in the drainage system. Rather than trying to prove how some inside, you keep the rats in the drains. 
Fabulous. Um, someone's asked a question, which I thought when you were talking about the cameras, um, how do you turn the camera? But I think you've got the fancy ones that rotate themselves. Yeah, that's one of those. If I told you that to kill you, because you'd all be doing it. Yeah. <laughs> fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. Like, honestly, it's not rocket science. It's using the right camera or the right cameras with the right technique. There yeah. are certain cameras you will not, because the okay. cable's too stiff, the, the spring at the back of the camera head, the camera's too big. So it's using the right equipment and the right technique. You've got to be careful you don't get them stuck as well. Oh, right? yes, it's, yeah, um, and that does happen, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so can we can we protect the manhole covers with NRV systems? Does that make any Non-return valve. Non-return valve, there we go. Yeah, yeah again, sketchy subject, and as much chance you cannot put non-return valves in shared drainage, the water companies will not have it. They will rip them out if you do if they see them and if you cause a blockage i had a client in london last week was told by thames water if that valve caused a blockage she will be invoiced for the call out 350 pound um mm. valves have the place we install 50 60 a year to protect power to protect pan connectors to stop rats climbing vertically so they have the place but the concern is if the valve causes a blockage the system backs up that sewage can leave the system the same way as a rat mm. So you've got to really install them after we've done a drain survey, so we know the condition of the drain is sufficient for the valves to operate properly. And you've got two problems. <laughs> yeah, Theory you can, yeah. Okay, fabulous. So what percentage of ingress do you see foul, uh, foul versus storm system? So what's the percentage of ingress? What, what would you have the most ingress, do you find, the foul? Yeah, I know where this is coming from. There's a... There are contractors who will tell you you don't get rats in rainwater systems because the fear is there's no food source. Absolute nonsense. You get rats in the rainwater systems. You can get estates built in the 50s, 60s, um, and the, uh, the plumber will come along and put a sink waste in and put it into the wrong system, into rainwater. So now you've got grease and fat in the rainwater systems. You have a food source. Mm. Rainwater systems can run to rivers or brooks or culverts, and rats will travel up from there exactly the same as they would from a sewer so they're the same you know mm -hmm. they are the same it just depends where you are in the country and what kind of sewer network you've got and the age mm -hmm. of your house but yeah uh, we look at rainwater systems equally as much as we do combined mm -hmm. or foul so you can't discount it you've got to look at it absolutely you said it's got to be comprehensive isn't it so um absolutely so someone's just asking about the video if it's accessible afterwards so yeah it is just to answer that question for uh the whole thing, um, yeah. yeah all available afterwards so um how how high svp have you experienced rats to climb uh four three four five stories quite easily yeah yeah once once in a park vertical you know it's once a climb i mean it's it, it's i mean that's a boring creatures and you've got a ready-made burrow, nice and uniform, with food and water whizzing, food and water mm. whizzing past. So yeah, once they climb, it, it really doesn't matter. And they don't climb, they run up. Mm. They run up so sort of perhaps, particularly yeah. plastic. So yeah, there's no, I don't, I, I think it's pretty limitless. Absolutely. I mean, I think this next question, I think you did answer it um, sort of during the presentation, but maybe um, um, someone didn't catch it. But he said, sorry if, it, if this is obvious, but if all the soil pipe and drainage is outside the building walls and boundary, how do rats get back inside the walls under the foundations? Right, again, so yeah, so the defects don't necessarily have to be under the property. They could be within a metre or two metres. And rats will follow the pipe, will get out of the pipework and follow it. Because obviously any pipework is in a trench. That trench has been back filled with loose material. Uh, bits of bricks, it's easy, easy, it's easy tunneling for them, yeah. So the defects do not have to be under the property. You can yeah. move in, as I say, I've known them tunnel four or five metres before now. Great. Um, so can you briefly explain how a dead end pipe for giving rats access into cavity would be repaired if under an extension to a building? And what sort of cost are you looking at for that repair? Ah, well, uh, so there's... Traditional, we've got you know, excavation, and it does happen. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of specialist lining systems where we can put, it's like a stent, basically, stainless steel and silicate resin. We can put a liner in the drain, inflate it, and it caps off redundant junctions. Uh, Cost-wise, I would have to, it comes down to pipe size, it comes down to access into the system, whether we can do it from a manhole, 
it comes down to whether it's a water authority sewer and we have to apply for a permit and permission. But uh, th there are no dig options, definitely. Mm -hmm. But yeah. sometimes the only answer is, uh, particularly when it's a manhole that's been built over with live connections, mm -hmm. there are many times where the only answer is to get the shovels out and, and dig the floor up in the face. Right, yeah, it can be hands and pieces of string sometimes. In terms it is, of it's, it's a tricky one, yeah. But, you know, but certainly if, if Person who sent that question and gets more detail to us, we can certainly uh, give them some figures. Great. Um, there's nothing from Ian. Um, I think, uh, I mean, we, we've sent an hour on the webinar, 45 minutes you have, so we can't cover everything. But Ian says there's no mention of pressure tests or smoke tests. Um, yeah. Isolate the system with sort of air bags and in the toilet bowl. Yeah, you can do, as you say, you know, the, the, the course of one is eight hours. So I can mm. only put <laughs> so much into this. Yeah, smoke machines, uh, pressure testing. So smoke testing is probably the oldest form of drain investigation. Mm -hmm. So what smoke tests will often tell you is there's a problem. It may not necessarily tell you where that problem is or what the problem is. Because where the smoke manifests is usually where the rat burrows come into the property. So it's mm -hmm. not directly adjacent to where the defect is. So yeah, it's all part of the armory, smoke testing. Pressure testing is the same. Most drains will leak under pressure anyway. It doesn't tell you where the rats are getting out, but Absolutely. it is part of it. We use a lot of smoke testing on vertical pipework in buildings, pipework that's boxed in, um, in bathrooms. And so it's a good, a good indicator before you start getting destructive. If you're getting mm -hmm. smoke coming out in the, a boxed in section, you know it's worth Absolutely. knocking like a hole you said, in the wall. You do a full day course on, on this, so. Um, covering. I think that's the thing about today, maybe I didn't explain in the beginning, is yeah. it's giving those pest controllers that visual understanding of how and why rats may come out of sewers and get into buildings. And yeah, we've covered, you know, um, you know, your cameras, etc. You, know, you can't cover everything today. So apologies about that, Ian. But yeah, you can find that out from uh, from, from Dave from the courses that you do. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll even on the say the, the rat detectives Facebook page. Great. It's there. Okay, so how to control rodent in cold storage where dairy products have been stored and dairy and food industry are? I think that's related generally to rats, so um, I think yeah. we will uh, leave that one there. Um, would you recommend that pest technicians fit one-way valves or interceptor caps in the cell to help prevent rat access? We kind of answered that a moment ago, I think, didn't we? Yeah, uh, but the, yeah, slightly different question. Interceptor traps are not a pest control device to be uh, installed to control sewer gas. Um, rats will swim on the traps. So uh, yeah, slightly different question, but right. we covered the valve side earlier. Absolutely. Um, Chris um, here says, excellent presentation, thank you. Um, thank you. How do you deal with sites where rats are chewing through plastic pipes? Yeah, so this is where you, the, um, the valves will come into play. Um, we get a lot of the flexible pan connectors chewed through, terrible things, I don't know how they were passed as fit for purpose. So yeah, if you're getting rats continuously gnawing through pipework, is the first thing to do is replace the plastic pipework with something better. You can't gnaw it out of, not always possible. Um, then you will be looking at installing uh, a valve to stop rats reaching that part of the system. Once you know the valve will operate properly because you've done the drain survey. And sometimes you have to build a manual to accommodate the valve. Uh, and sometimes that's not possible. On the terrace properties that have all been extended, there's just nowhere to put, put a chamber. But uh, yeah, there, there are a couple, couple of techniques um, to stop rats chewing through plastic pipe. Where you can also stop rats climbing vertical pipe work, like solvent pipes, by increasing the diameter from 100 mil to 150 mil. It's just too much for them. Mm -hmm. Most. I'll be careful about put this. It's too much for most mm -hmm. to, <laughs> to climb. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a few different techniques. Great. Um, we, we've got time for one more question. Just to answer, there's a few people asking about the areas that you cover and whether you cover Sussex and Northern Ireland. And I think best way is to, if all of you can get in touch with David through Facebook page or on the website, and then you can maybe help them out in terms of recommending Yeah, yeah, someone. yeah, we'll do what we can, obviously, yeah. That'd be great. Um, okay, so uh, one more question. I think, oh, let's try and find one that, one of them are a bit statement. Um, uh, we have spoken before, and as the larger, as the manufacturing distributor, uh, or no, that's a general statement, um, how often do you clean your inspection kit, and what protection do you guys take to avoid pathogens from the drains? Yeah, so uh, obviously it's expensive kit, so it is looked after. <laughs> you know, it's you need it to 
uh, you need to work every time you get it out. So yeah, we look after the kit. Uh, what was the second part? What? Um, sorry. So oh, let me go back up to a question. Um, God, I was trying to find it now, so I might have just missed that one. Um, was it about PPA? How do yeah, we? So how do you keep yourself safe? So when you're carrying out this drainage system, you know, how do you keep your yeah? Yourself well, it's safe? it's. It's an interesting subject at the moment with the uh, with COVID because they're finding COVID in the sewers, um, as did SARS, but it doesn't last too long, fortunately. So yeah, uh, WHO advice for all sewage workers is standard PPE, barrier creams, sanitise, all, all the usual stuff. Great. Fabulous. Well, unfortunately, we have to bring it to, to an end. We're one minute over, but I'm sure... Uh... Um, everybody's happy to just go ask those questions. We've got 21 more that haven't unfortunately been answered today. But as you said, Dave, you're happy to, you know, just Please answer do, a few yeah. in the text. And we've probably done it with a few webinars before. Where we'll send out an email to everybody with the answers on there. And um, yeah, get in touch with Davey on Facebook or the web, uh, I mean, website to ask you more questions. Again, thank you very much, Davey. Appreciate it a lot. And thank you, everybody, for attending the webinar today. And have a great day. Thank Take you. Care. Thanks, Davey.